What's up there, this is Mr. Mike Kaufman. And in this video, I'm talking about feedback and how to leverage some powerful technology tools to improve student learning through feedback. Um, what we do know from Marzano's research is that good teaching along with good technology improves student learning. So in this case, we're gonna talk a little bit about um, just some qualities of good feedback and how uh, quality feedback does improve student learning. And we're gonna take a look at some strategies by Grant Wiggins. And then I'm gonna connect those to a variety of technology tools on how to make the most of those strategies using the power of technology. Again, all to improve student learning. All right, let's get into it. All right, so this is all about improving student learning by giving better feedback. All right, so according to Grant Wiggins, 2012, decades of education research shows that providing more feedback <clears throat> um, leads to greater learning, right? It's a step in learning uh, not just Grant Wiggins, uh, but a variety of researchers, Janie Pollack, who talks about how it's the hinge between teaching and learning. This is a place where technology can really come in and make your lives and the lives of your students better, right, through purposeful use of some of these cool tech tools with giving feedback. So according to Wiggins, there are seven keys to effective feedback. The first being that it's goal referenced so that it connects directly to a clear learning goal. Um, so that's the first starting place with any good uh, lesson that the students know exactly what it is that they're supposed to learn before they begin learning it. And the feedback then should reference that goal. And the next thing is that it's tangible and transparent, meaning that the feedback is clear to the students, right? They understand exactly uh, what you're saying and how that relates to them meeting that goal. Uh, one thing is we want to remove any value statements to it, right? So instead of saying, good job, your thesis statement, blah, 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 blah. You want to get rid of the good job part and then go right into your thesis statement, blah, 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 blah. And again, connecting it to the, the goal. And then again, it's transparent and it's clear and tangible. The students know exactly what it is uh, they're doing and how that progresses towards that goal. The next step is that it's actionable, meaning that the students can take your feedback or take feedback from peers or whatever it is, and then use it to again master that goal right that it leads to action that it leads to doing things uh, better and becoming a master of whatever it is that they're trying to learn the next step is that it's user friendly so the way it's presented to students the way they have access to it uh, they're able to actually make use of it uh, this is a place where uh, technology really comes in handy uh, the ability to record video of feedback so students can come back to it again and again makes it actionable and user friendly as well as transparent. Goals and feedback or feedback on goals should be timely, right? As quickly as a student is right, learning and trying something out, they should be receiving feedback to know whether or not they are mastering it. This is a great place where something like Google Forms or other online quizzes that can give instant feedback to whether students are on the right task, on the right track uh, to mastering that goal. Next piece is that it's ongoing, so something that it just doesn't happen once, but it's continually provided to students throughout the learning process and throughout their learning, and that it's consistent. Uh, the type of feedback they're getting is consistent, they're receiving it again throughout the learning process, and that they can expect it uh, and get into a routine with it. Right, so these are some seven keys to effective feedback. According to Wiggins, there's others out there, but now let's connect these seven things and then how technology can enhance right, these seven keys to effective feedback. So here I've got a Venn diagram of a variety of resources that I have tutorials on and how they fall into feedback or grading. Now, one thing I wanna make clear is that we do wanna separate feedback from grading. Now, once you try to put the two together, feedback typically takes a far uh, back seat to the actual grade. We know this from experience, right? We hand back an assignment to students with a grade on it and you know our feedback, and typically the only place that they're looking is, well, how did I do? What grades did I get? Um, did I get an A? Did I get an 84? Did I get a three? Whatever grading scale um, that you're using. So you do wanna be careful that you separate the two. Feedback where it's gonna be actionable students, again, with the value detached from it, right? We're not passing value uh, when we're giving feedback. We're offering suggestions and telling students what steps they need to take next to mastering their goal. Or grading, of course, attaches a value, right? That's the point of it. So some of these tools here uh, that I provide do a little bit of both. And then the ones that fall in the middle, for example, comment banks can be right, used for grading or feedback depending on how you're using it. 
So going through this um, quickly, and then I'll show you where to go on my site to get uh, tutorials on this. So Kazena is a tool that allows you to give audio feedback, record your voice to give feedback to student work. This is a great way to make your feedback tangible and transparent, right? The way that students can truly understand what it is you're saying because your voice is going to convey more meaning with intonation than it would be just the typed out word. Because it also attaches directly into Google Docs and integrates perfectly into the G Suite, making it user friendly. So again, we're really just able to hit on some of those key fundamental uh, properties of quality feedback. It's intuitive um, and it allows you to set things up prior to help feedback then become timely. Right. When you get things set up in Kazana, it then becomes just a few clicks of the button to be able to give feedback, allowing you to do it faster. The next one, I think one of my favorites is recording screencast live videos to give feedback on student work. Again, hitting on this ability that it conveys more meaning, making it tangible. Students can see your face, hear your voice. Um, with the live video, you can be highlighting work. You can be typing comments into student work as you're giving the feedback. Again, just making it very user friendly and clear to students the exact feedback and how their uh, attempt is progressing towards meeting that goal. So a great tool there. Another one I have on there is student response and comment keys, uh, being able to, again, make your work a little more timely by creating comment keys where you're just popping out, uh, you know, the start of the word and it fills in the rest of it. And as well as adding in additional resources to attach Google Doc, and I'll show you what that looks like, making it actionable, right? Allowing students to then take action on the feedback to make improvements. And then with Google Docs, hopping into suggesting mode where you're offering the specific suggestions, um, a type of feedback, and again, something that can be made transparent and user friendly with students without actually doing the work for them. Down the middle, we've got a variety of tools that can serve as either grading or feedback, depending on how you're using it. The comment bank in Google Classroom allows your comments to be made quicker and easier, making it more timely. Rubrics, a relatively new feature uh, with Classroom. If you're setting it up without the numerical value, which is an option, you can then give feedback through the rubric. Again, something that you want to be careful of that is not just grading, that it is providing actionable uh, feedback and not just summative uh, feedback. And then finally, Google Forms can be used either to create quizzes that are graded or can be set up so that you're offering feedback through it, right? So students can get instant feedback of do they understand the basic concepts you can set it up where it tracks students so if they get a question right it moves on if it doesn't it sends them to a tutorial or asks them to try again so again there's a way to really hit on that instant timely feedback uh, through the power of it and then over on the right side i just have some different suggestions on how to use these tools or some tools to make grading more timely which then should hopefully should free up more time for you to give that quality feedback that we know will help students learn all right, so now let's dive into the site and I'm gonna give you a quick little tour so that way you can make decisions on where you wanna go and what tools you wanna to incorporate into your teaching. All right, so here's the site I'm um, talking about again, a little bit of setting uh, this, the stage in terms of why we're giving feedback and why it's an important step in the learning process. A link to the seven keys to effective feedback, which I referenced earlier um, from Grant Wiggins. So the first one is on video feedback. So here again, talking about how to use Screencastify uh, to give video feedback on student work. Uh, again, awesome tool. The video is relatively short. You can watch it and get going uh, and how to again incorporate video feedback into your uh, routine. Next up here is tutorial on how to use Google rubrics. And in this case, again, being able to set it up for grading if you're, if you're giving grades or in a way to remove the numerical grade to then make it more of a feedback tool. Next up there is the page on comment banks and how to set up and use comment banks within Google Classroom to then offer suggestions in a more timely manner, saving you time and allowing you to give more feedback uh, without, again, spending the hours it takes to uh, properly do it. Next one's up is Kazena, which I mentioned again, allows you to give audio feedback, integrates into your uh, Google tools really easily as a Google Docs add-on or as a separate site. It can be used with all different types of documents. You can set up rubrics. Uh, you can offer, uh, set up learning progressions in there as well as setting up suggestions or resources so that you're providing links to uh, resources that students can use to improve learning. Again, making it actionable. 
great tool there. And if you click down on the more, we've just got some basic tips here, um, different levels of better feedback for some of these tools, how to incorporate uh, work that is not digital, and how to get that into a digital form so that you can give digital feedback to it. And then just some general tips here, a variety of ways um, to make feedback or grading faster or easier, using preview to efficiently check your work, how to set up forms, uh, grading question by question, importing grades from forms to classroom. All right, so this is more just tips to help grading happen faster, which then hopefully again should free up some more time for you to give feedback. So that's it. That's the walkthrough of how uh, you can use some of these technology tools to incorporate into your feedback routine. Again, a routine that we should be doing more as teachers because we know the research supports that feedback, more feedback leads to more student learning and ways that technology amplifies feedback and makes it more actionable, makes it more user-friendly, makes it transparent, makes it timely, right? All those things that we know are best practices when giving feedback all to improve student learning. Good luck.